Um, you probably saw on the on television that the, the Israeli military had gone through the, the ships and had gotten a whole lot of knives that they presented in, in the footage. And those knives were on board. They were part of the kitchens of the ships that were needed to feed the 600 people. We need to know if the stabs that the Israeli military said were actually stabs or if they were Israeli commandos who may have repelled down, and as I've heard from two different sources, repelled down into poles that were there, but they received puncture wounds because they hit the poles as they were repelling down. Now we don't see how that scene on the top of the ship ended. What the Israeli military has given out is that uh, the commandos were beaten up and then the footage ends. What we didn't see, if they had let that footage keep going, is the captain of the ship and the director of IHH coming out of the wheelhouse of the ship with megaphone saying to the passengers on top of the ship, stop beating up the commando, stop beating them up, and telling a Turkish doctor who was up on the top in the wheelhouse to take those commandos that had been injured, take them down to the first aid station that was on the ship, and get them treated and immediately return them to Israeli military control. Because the first thing that you knew was going to happen, if those commandos were in the hands of the passengers, the, the Israeli military were going to go after them. And that was not the purpose of this, to hold anyone hostage. So the Turkish doctor, and you probably saw pictures of this on, on, on at least the internet, and in a uh, New York Times interview that the, the Turkish doctor gave, that had some photographs, that they treated these three Israeli soldiers, commandos, and returned them to Israeli control. Now during that time, other things were happening on other parts of the ship. There was lethal, uh, there was live ammunition that started to be used at some point. Some of the passengers say there was live fire coming from the Zodiac boats that were attempting to board, that there were people that were up on the ship that all of a sudden fell over because they had been shot from below. Uh, there were people that were in the press room uh, that were shot, including the young man, 38 years old, who was in charge of the press room. He had been a journalist himself. He had been hired by IHH to set up the press room and to set up the bank of computers so that journalists could use them and send out things. He was shot through the head. There were nine people that were killed in a period of 20 minutes. There, of the nine bodies, 35 bullets were found in nine bodies. The young American, 19 years old, born of Turkish parents, born here in the United States in Troy, New York, and his parents moved back to Turkey when he was two years old. But for some reason, he didn't apply directly for Turkish citizenship. He is an American citizen. His body was found with five bullets in it. So what happened? When, did, when was the order given to go ahead and use that live fire? It didn't take the commandos more than about 20 minutes to gain control of the Martin Barbara. The captain of the ship very quickly was right on the radio, radioing the, the Israeli military. We have casualties on board. We have seriously injured people. They've been shot. We need help. We cannot, we, we cannot treat them. We don't have, we don't have the, the, the medical facilities to treat them, we need help. Within 15 or 20 minutes later, the Israeli military was starting to send helicopters to have some of the more seriously wounded taken off. But during the next 12 hours, as the Israeli military went through every floor of the, of the uh, ship, and went through every person's personal belongings, every suitcase, every briefcase, everything dumped out in the floor of the ship, every piece of humanitarian goods that were in bales, pulled over and dumped on the floor. The, the Israeli government says, now we return the personal possessions of people on the flotilla. Well, I will have to say they did return some suitcases, all of which came from one ship, the Marmara. However, when the people who spotted their suitcases in Istanbul, Turkey, four days later, in a medical facility where we were brought, 
Uh, when they went to, to get their suitcase, that's my suitcase, and they opened it up, very seldom did anyone find anything in it with, that was theirs. That indeed, when the young soldiers were told, okay, pack up all this stuff, put stuff in the suitcases, it was whatever they could get. You know how 18, 19 year olds would be. Just grab whatever you can, stick, stick it in there. So we have 750 people who essentially, uh, and this is honestly the least of our worries, but just to give you some indication of some of the ramifications of these things, that we have the 600 people out of Arbor, some of whom saw some of their, at least their suitcases. But on the other five ships, those of us that were on those, we've seen nothing of any of our possessions. Nothing. And that's despite repeated pleas to our Department of State. I was in, after I got back to Washington, um, the first thing I did was make an appointment to go over to the, the Bureau of Consular Affairs to go and American Citizen Services to put in my lengthy letter to Secretary of State Hillary Clinton demanding that my government uh, forcefully tell the Israeli government that American citizens, 14 of us, had been victims of an act of piracy on the high seas to include a U.S. flag vessel, that we had been kidnapped from the high seas 70 miles off the coast of Gaza, that we had been brought to Israel against our will, that we had been imprisoned and we had been deported, and all of our stuff had been stolen. Well, still, we have not heard anything back from the Secretary of State or any of her staff about where our stuff is. If any of you all happen to be going to Israel, I would hope that you would go to the pawn shops right outside the military bases, because that's usually where you can find stuff that's been purloined by U.S. soldiers. If you ever go next to a U.S. military base, go into the pawn shops and you can see stuff from all over the world. It's a pretty common trait. Uh, some of the passengers uh, that got back to the States and started checking on uh, cell phone records found that cell phones had been used, that satellite phones had been used, that credit cards had been used. 